<clears throat> as I was sun gazing, I received some thoughts about how everything started. And we have been told by certain books that in the beginning there was God and God was good and and there was no evil and uh, and he created everything looking good and etc etc <coughs> I, I was told actually the opposite I was told that when everything arose everything was just the way it came to be and evil came to be first and this you can observe in everyday life primitive forms of of uh, beings display this uh, behavior you see a small bird which by all accounts we think it's a good bird a nice being um, I saw while out sun gazing that a big bird came and pushed a little bird out of the way because there were a lot of worms in the field and the big bird wanted to eat those worms and in this particular location you could see a lot of those worms so the stronger one push aside the weaker one now the little war the little uh, worm from a worm's perspective both of the birds are evil from the perspective of the small bird well she was there first the big bird is the evil one right and we see this then the stream of, of thoughts uh, continued telling me that as life progresses goodness comes to all civilizations if you can call them civilizations so as we have probably all heard the theory of how government originated in the beginning there were a bunch of thieves who used to come and steal the food from the poor honest guy hard-working guy who was trying to plant seeds and feed his family and had his animals so then these thieves would come and take everything he had and kill all of this hard-working people right then one day there was a, a thief so that was not only strong and and who was leader of the gang that had an idea and the idea was hey let's stop killing these people who work because next year when we come back to try to get some food there is no food because nobody has planted the the soil and, uh, and there's there are no crops so this guy had an idea he th he said well let's go ahead and divide the gang you go to that side and you attack those people but don't kill them just steal from them and then I will come and defend them and uh, then we will go ahead and form an alliance with these people I the defender will become a leader in this village and I will be respected and they will pay me a tax for protection and uh, and you I will do the same and come to your area and I will pretend I'm attacking and you're gonna pretend you're going to defeat me and I'm gonna run away and uh, you're going to collect taxes from that area and at the end of the day they were just friends but here's where good rises out of evil the the convenience of having somebody to do the job for you makes the evil person stop killing you stop killing the the defenseless the weaker and uh, this point in time the farmer who was interested in working his land and having a more peaceful life he is able to to achieve that to a certain extent 
instead of being killed and or having his wife raped by these guys, there's a little bit more respect. And uh, society grows, then the thieves need to start hiring accountants or people who help them to manage this form of, um, you can call, arrangement. And, and then this grows, the people have a, a other, they receive other benefits and the society grows. As the thoughts continue, I was told that eventually societies, civilizations evolve to the point that all this convenience becomes so great that you end up having a lot of good. And as this evolution happens, there are some civilizations that reach the other opposite, which is the opposite of darkness, to be a society completely enlightened with, a, with good, ruled by goodness. And, and this is, these individuals are watching us at this moment, as we are evolving, as we are going through this process that has, that, that took them who knows how long. And then in the same, at the same time, I was given these other thoughts. There's a city and there is the language that we speak was written by certain individuals that codified certain messages to us. For example, when a corporation or when somebody suffers a loss, that is in reality an anagram for soul, but in reverse. This means without the soul, without the sun. Soul is sun, is in Latin. So, loss, L-O-S, really spells double S-O-L, without sun. If you visit certain parts of the world, you come to a city called Oslo, which in reality is solo. And not really just solo, it is S double O L soul is talking about the sun again. When you find a solution to a problem, a solution is because you have gone to the sun to get intelligence from her and she has given you the wisdom. So out of the darkness, the light rises. In the beginning, there was evil. Coincidentally, there is a famous movie, a famous story. Because, believe it or not, we are being educated by television or by cinema. So the Darth Vader, which really means the Dark Father, has a son. His son's name is Luke, which means light. What a coincidence. This is goes with what I am talking about. And this light rises to be a very strong Jedi, right? He's able to use the force. He's able to use the light. When we speak our intent, whether out loud or in our heart, Three of the main religions in the world, Muslim, Jewish, and Christian, finish their prayers by invoking Amen, also known as Amun, Amun, the sun. They are invoking the sun. All of these coincidences point at us going to sun gaze to gain our knowledge, to speak our intent, to 
do our prayers, or whatever you want to call it, and finish with the name of Amen, right? But one thing one must understand, the Son is not separate from us. The Son is us. And only when we can grasp that we are one, then we can enjoy everything. We are not here to come and, and just bow down and think we are separate. One can bow down, it's okay, but one must recognize that we are one. The sun is no different. Enjoy the power. Enjoy being, changing this world. Sun gaze.